Our Computex coverage is made possible thanks to the following sponsors. Show them some love for helping us get here to Taipei. So NVIDIA is really pushing hard this Computex season with so many announcements and really cool things with VR. The 980 Ti launched marked uh, not only a step closer to proper 4K gaming on a single card, but this GPU will enable more demanding VR applications to flourish. And NVIDIA's GeForce experience was an awesome indication of just how close we are to amazing VR experiences. So first things first, G-Sync has made its way into gaming notebooks, and that's that's right, G-Sync is now on mobile and that's so exciting as G-Sync is a perfect fit for mobile gaming machines where AAA titles are very demanding on mobile GPUs and you might encounter stutter and most annoyingly tearing. So there are many partners that join this push including MSI, Asus, Aorus and Gigabyte. The panels will be 75 Hz so finally we're seeing higher refresh rate than 60 on mobile and you no longer need the G-Sync module installed inside the machine as the GPU can communicates directly with the panel and we've waited a while for this. Now we can bump in the game settings and experience much smoother gameplay. The technology is built into the GPU directly and Nvidia has a certification process through which they guarantee a smooth gaming experience where G-Sync on mobile might become the standard. Next is Nvidia's Gameworks VR, uh, something they are really interested in and letting the 980 Ti push for advancement in VR applications. They've developed multi res shaders that allows the edge pixels of an image that's rendered for a VR headset to be rendered at the lower resolution while keeping the center where your eyes are focused in perfect quality. And we've spoken with Tom Peterson where he discusses the advantages of multi res shaders. Okay, so. Uh what we're looking here at, Dimitri, is a new piece of technology that we call multi-res shading. And what multi-res shading does is it allows us to take advantage of the way VR works to improve performance. And it's pretty easy to understand. It starts off with, you got to look inside the headset, and there's actually lenses inside the headset. And what they're there for is to change the focal distance. So if you imagine, if you didn't have lenses, you'd be looking at a screen that's basically three inches in front of your face. And it'd be really fatiguing and very hard to focus and see things. So by having the lenses, it actually moves the focal distance out and your eyes can relax and you can actually focus without like t dialing down your eyes to a three inch distance. Now because of those lenses, it actually distorts what's seen on the screen. And so what we have to do on the GPU is to sort of anti-distort. And that's what this pic, this demo is showing you. This image up here is what a GPU would render. It's nice and square, all the lines are straight. But if you look down here, this is the image that's actually going onto the screen in the headset. And the reason it's all kind of rounded out and distorted is because remember, there's gonna be a, an optic that sits in front of this between your eye. And so that optic actually re-distorts it and makes it straight again. Now because of that, it becomes very clear that this picture is bigger than that picture. And what's happening is, during that distortion, certain pixels are being sort of de-emphasized because there's, there's only so much screen real estate and if you distort things, you effectively lose information. So with multi-res shading, what we've done is said, okay, if we're going to distort it and lose information anyway, we might as well do that up front and actually never overspend effort and render pixels that don't get seen. So that's what I'm showing you on the right. On the right is a little uh, image that represents what we call multi-res shading. Now it's a little hard to see. I'm gonna go ahead and use the headset and I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on. Okay, so now the headset is controlling the display. And what's interesting is if you look over here in the light, let me reset that real quick to get it kind of realigned. Okay, just a little, and then re enable. Okay, so if I move the headset up and down, what you're actually seeing is this weird sort of fracture. That's because this edge is being rendered at a lower resolution than the center. Okay, and so because we're spending less effort to render the edges, uh, we can improve performance. And then when we take this image and rewarp it, you can't see any difference. So the idea is the combination of being aware that most of the time you're focused in the center and the fact that there's a lens there that's gonna warp this image back to your iris um, you, you can actually do intelligent things. And using this technology, we think we can save around 50% of the pixel load for, uh, for VR. 
Now, one of the coolest demos that we've played at GeForce Experience was with Hydra CCP, the guys who brought us EVE Online, uh, where they are using the Kinect to scan your body and when inside the VR, you actually see your body when you look down and you see your hands and everything is scaled uh, pretty much one to one. And whenever an anomaly enters your Kinect space, they start to glow orange so other people feel like they're out of matrix and this was the first time you actually feel like your body and other people around you are in this virtual world. Ibor and I played this multiplayer, the Tron Discs, where you actually had to throw with one hand and block with the other. It was amazing because I saw Ibor on the other side of the room in front of me and he was rendered to scale. And the work these companies are doing with VR is just amazing, allowing your body to actually interact with objects in VR world. So there was a blocks demo where you can punch or kick the blocks with incredible accuracy, where even the speed of body movement translates so well into the force applied onto the object. You couldn't pick up the boxes yet and move them around, uh, but that is something in the works, perhaps uh, build your own fort. But uh, getting such high accuracy for your own body, interacting with virtual objects is something incredibly cool. And finally, we get to see a mech demo with DX 12.1 features powered by the GTX 980 Ti that showed some incredible graphics with interactive smoke effects. So when the robot was walking around, the smoke particles would bounce around based on the robot location, lighting reflections that takes into account surface texture and surface direction with beautiful rendering of light and how it interacts with everything uh, when he fires his weapon and how even the color output of the source changes the color of the shadows and the light bounce. And also realistic shadows that are not just blurred out, but everything is taken into account, like the distance from the light source, shadow displacement, shadow color depth, and just the amount of things the GPU has to take care of in this mech demo scene is amazing. And we really can't wait to see DX 12.1 features roll out with actual games, something NVIDIA is really proud of.